Hi, and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at a tool I saw demonstrated on Tom Lipton's channel over at Ox Tools. Tom is a fantastic resource. If you haven't checked out his channel, Ox Tools, on YouTube, I highly recommend it. The guy is a master machinist, and you'll learn something every time you watch one of his videos. He's also a rabid tool collector like myself, which means that for people like me, watching his videos means I have to have another one or five browser pages open to try and find the tools that he's demonstrating. He demonstrated one in a recent video to solve a problem that I've had many times before. And my solution was a much harder one that actually had to damage whatever it was I was trying to measure. And I'll explain that more in a second. Uh, but he had a really cool tool that someone had made for him that solved the problem rather elegantly. So we'll get to that in a second. So if you have a part like this, so here is this one, two, three block with chamfered edges and the chamfers are closed, but not all the same. And you wanna find the edge of this, of this block. That's a pretty easy situation. You can just come in with your edge finder to the edge, like so. I've got it rotated so you can see. Find this edge move over half the diameter of the edge finder and you'll be right over that edge. Now, that's a situation we all run into. It doesn't require any special tools other than edge finder. This is an electronic edge finder, but you could use the traditional rotating edge finder to find it equally well. And it would be, it would be great. You could get very, very accurate results that way. Now, what if the same part was rotated at an angle like this? First of all, one way to find that edge would try and get your edge finder right up close to the sharp tippy point of, of that edge here. But if it's been chamfered like this, you can't do that. And even if it hasn't been chamfered, trying to get that very sharp edge and just, just you know, tap it to find a close approximation of where the plane is that goes right through that corner, that now imaginary corner, it's a pretty difficult problem to solve. So in the past, the way I solved that was I would come over from the corner. So I, when this was flat, I would find this edge. I would come over, say, half an inch here. I would drill and ream a hole for something called a tooling ball. And the advantage of a tooling ball is the center of this tooling ball is a certain height above this base here. It's fixed if you get the kind with the flange like this. So that's fixed. But more importantly, that axis, the center of the hole that, that the base is going through is right through the center of the sphere. And no matter where you uh, rotate this within reason, because the base gets in the way, uh, you can bring your indicator in and you touch off on this and you will be a fixed distance from the center. In this case, is a half inch. So you will be you will be 250 thousandths from the center of this. And then using geometry, I typically use a CAD program to do it because I'm lazy, well, and prone to make stupid math errors. So I use a CAD program to do the geometric layout. So I, so I know that once I found the center of this ball, tooling ball that is a certain height over the part, I know where the, the corner is over here. And so if I had this part on an angle and I had the tooling ball going through it, I could touch off on the tooling ball with my, with my edge finder. Here's my electronic edge finder. See, <laughs> I don't know, that makes it kind of awkward for you to see, doesn't it? If it's over here, edge finder comes in, touches off on it, then I know I can count, I, once I know that, di that distance there, I can use my CAD drawing to see exactly how far I need to come over to be right over this corner. Well, Tom had a really cool tool that makes all of that solvable without even having to go through a CAD program to do some math or the math yourself. Just to reiterate and offer more clarification in case it wasn't clear, if you have a part like this that you can't drill an extra hole in because whoever it's being made for or whatever use it's got precludes it from having a hole for mounting a tooling ball to find this edge, what do you do? So that becomes a very difficult problem until you have this tool that Tom introduced to me last week. So I'm getting to the tool itself, but I wanted to point out that I had 
used a service from China. Originally, I tried to have the parts made here in the United States with EDM manufacturers here in the United States, and the price was going to be prohibitively large. A lot of the vendors I called had a minimum charge, which was going to be something like $500. Uh, when I found ones that didn't have a minimum charge, they wanted nearly a hundred bucks per part. So I found this company. I did a search. I was doing a search on Google for EDM and ran across this company called Rapid Direct. Turns out it's a Chinese, one of the Chinese fabricators that you upload your drawing to and lay out all the specifics of the part you want, and they will get back to you with a quote. Uh, usually automatically on the website, for, for, but for a part as complicated as this, it said they need to get back to me because I wanted really tight accuracy, which in this case, really tight accuracy was one or two thousandths. I know that's not super accurate for a piece of tooling, but that, I think that was the most accurate thing I could find on their website. In any case, uh, they got back to me really quickly, surprisingly, and then I had questions about their quote, and we went back and forth, and I was doing it in the evening here in the west coast of the United States, and they were responding sometimes within seconds, sometimes, but no longer than like five minutes in responses. I was blown away at the responsiveness. Now they're not, they did not know I was a YouTuber. They did not offer me free services. They did not offer me a discount to their services other than on the website, first time users get a discount of, I forget, some small amount, 20 bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. So I got that, but other than that, uh, the, there was there was nothing that they were offering me to do this, so this is not a commercial for them. I was just totally blown away by how convenient their service was and how easy they were to get back to me. Now, their website was a little bit of a pain in the butt to navigate. I had ended up having to enter the part multiple times, um, but they had no issue with me going around and iterating on the part for larger or smaller just to get the price in the range I wanted. So ultimately, the price came out to something like, uh, well, with shipping, shipping was, they charged like 40 some dollars or $50 shipping, I forget. And so the parts came out to something like 25 bucks a piece. I'm sorry, 45 bucks a piece, 45 bucks a piece, instead of around 100 bucks a piece. So I got a good deal on that. And I got this part it took them, they get three weeks, although the only reason it was three weeks is because I think they had, a, they normally do 10 days, but it was right in the beginning of one of their Chinese holidays. They were still responding to me on a weekend the day before their holiday started, which I was also blown away at. Um, you don't get that kind of service too often. So they shipped me this box. I haven't opened it yet other than just the lid. And... <laughs> Here's their after sales service card and they offer you white gloves, which is interesting to handle your parts, I guess. So like I said, I haven't opened this. I haven't seen the quality of their work yet, uh, but what we discussed, what I discussed with them is to have them EDM cut out these parts so that I could find the corner of a part that's at an arbitrary angle, any arbitrary, well, a lot of arbitrary angles. It's limited by the fact that you'll run into part of the tool itself at some point, just like with a tooling ball. All right, let's open this guy up. This is how it was packed. Like you see, I did not open this yet. This is a really simple tool conceptually, but to make it yourself is going to be quite a challenge. I think it's a perfect job for EDM, but I don't have access or have an EDM machine. So I did not ask for a polished finish, but I did ask for an accurate one. And I ordered five of these uh, because I have several friends that if this works out to be accurate, I want to give it to them. I got holidays coming up and uh, this will be a really handy tool. So let's take a look at one of these guys. Oh, they uh, double bagged them, which is nice. I got the shipment. The shipment was sent out. Oh, nice. It's covered in oil, too. Let me go grab a rag real quick. So I think it was shipped on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and I got it on a Friday. And again, I'm on the west coast of the United States, so maybe that has some meaning. So the finish looks good. I think what they used was pre-ground plate that's half inch thick. It's half inch this way. That's not a critical measurement. The one that is critical is that this diameter needs to be half an inch and this plane 
of this surface right here has to go right through the center of the circle. So that's why I had it laid out in Fusion 360. And what you do is you lay this part on the side of something you're trying to measure that's at an angle, bring your edge finder in, and when my edge finder touches off here, it is going to be half the edge, edge finder diameter plus 250 thousandths from that corner. Pretty brilliant, huh? Tom had one of these that uh, he was demonstrating, and I go, oh, that is a great tool, and I have needed it on multiple occasions. So let's see how accurate these parts I had made were. They weren't cheap, but they were a heck of a lot cheaper than I could get them for here. So that was why I, I found it. And to be honest, at first I didn't know they were a Chinese company because I was just doing Google searches for EDM uh, vendors and they popped up. Now the accuracy that I chose from this vendor was plus or minus a thousandth, I think. So this could be off by, a th or maybe it was two thousandths. That was the accuracy they were promising. Look what they delivered. The diameter is right on half an inch. I did not expect it to be that good. That's pretty freaking amazing. So that's a really good sign. The most important part, that diameter has to be very accurate and it has to be very round, but it also, this plane has to go dead through the center of this part. So let's head over to the mill. Now there's gonna be the limitation on my accuracy right there. Let's head over to the mill. All right, so we've got the one, two, three block vertically in the vise, and I've got the edge finder close up to it, but not touching quite yet. And one thing I do to make sure that this part is vertical, which is important for this measurement, is that in this particular example, is that as this edge finder gets close to this part, that the cylinder here intersects this guy as it gets really close, has an equal is equidistant from the surface all the way up and down the edge of the edge finder. And it looks like it is very straight vertical in there. And hit my Y zero. Come back, go over to a hundred thousandths. Now that I know that the zero point on my DRO is dead over this edge, if it was vertically extended up to where the point would be, I'm going to pop this guy on here, make sure everything's clean. It's not touching the vice base, I thought it was. It's got like, you know, 10 thousandths above it, so it was lucky height setting for my uh, one, two, three block. And this guy slides very smoothly over the ground surface. And we're just gonna touch off which the edge finder, now since my zero point is on the plane that's parallel to this surface, I should be half this diameter, which is 100 thousandths, plus half that diameter, which is 250 thousandths, or 350 thousandths away from that edge. All right, so remember the accuracy of this edge finder is supposed to be a couple tenths. The DRO on my mill is only accurate to a couple of tenths typically. I think it goes in like two or three tenths increments. Look at that, 350 thousandths point one. So I am off by a tenth of the accurate location of that edge. That is much better than I expected and absolutely fantastic. The quality of the workmanship was far better than they promised, which was, I think, plus or minus one thousandth or plus or minus two thousandths. This is absolutely fantastic. All right, next up, I've got a 25 degree angle block here that I'm just gonna sit on top of a parallel there. And I should make sure that there's nothing, nothing under it. And this is the situation where this tool will shine. This is a 90 degree angle and it needs to be. This guy can sit right here on the edge of the 90 degree angle mating with both surfaces, which it is. I can come over and make sure that I am far enough over that the flat of this touches the tangent 
of this cylinder. I can set my X zero, come up, go over 350 thousandths, and I should be right over that edge. Visually, that looks correct. I'm gonna put a pointer in here and see if that's actually the case. I will only be able to be as accurate as the pointer is sharp. I ground these points on my surface grinder, but still, using a point to find an edge is not a great way to find that edge for accuracy, uh, especially if it's been chamfered. This one has not been chamfered, so it, it'll at least give me an indication of how close I am, visually speaking. From this angle, it looks dead on. From this angle, it also looks dead on. I put the white paper behind it because the autofocus was having a serious trouble uh, focusing on that point. It was trying to wander all over the place to things in the background. But you can see, at least within the accuracy of this point and that edge, that looks like it is right on the money. All right, I think we have a really useful tool here. Uh, pretty fantastic that I can find edges of parts put at an angle or a part that's been chamfered at an angle, which is even more useful because that makes it virtually impossible to find without actually adding an additional hole and then putting a tooling ball, doing some CAD work to find that edge. And a lot of times putting an extra hole that's drilled and reamed is not an option. So this is a really handy tool to have. Thank you, Tom Lipton, and thank you Rapid Direct for providing something that's better quality than you originally promised by quite a bit, actually, one to two thousandths, uh, when in fact this is accurate to a couple tenths, it seems. The diameter was to the accuracy of my, my micrometer. I was really surprised by that. I'm, I, I will be completely honest. So anyways, that's it. I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully this tool will be useful for you. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.